more people joining us. We'll call to order the March 13th meeting of the Montana Geospatial Information Advisory Council. I'm Jenny Stapp. I'm the state librarian. Uh, Valentin in the room, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Valentin Hoff, um, representing the Montana University System for Missouri and Montana. Uh, and then council members online, Eric, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, good morning. My name is Eric Spangenberg. I work for Lewis and Clark County in the city of Helena as the GIS coordinator. And uh, my representation on the council is as the Montana GIS professional. So. Great. And Maureen. Good morning, everybody. I'm Maureen Sealander. I'm the Custer County GIS manager and I represent local government um, on the board. Uh, Lee Mackles. Uh, good morning, Lee Mackholtz, GIS Manager for the City of Missoula and Local Government Representative. And Karen. Good morning, this is uh, Karen Coleman. And um, when I last attended one of these meetings, I thought I was sitting in. Little did <laughs> I know that my supervisor was in the process of leaving the DNRC. And so now I guess I am the official state government representative to the council. Eight. Karen, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. And it looks like Alan is joining us. Alan, we're just doing introductions. So if you can hear us and you're in a place to introduce yourself, please go ahead. Alan, can you hear us? Uh, let's do introductions in the room. Erin, do you want to introduce yourself? Good morning, everyone. I'm Erin Beshway. I'm the state GIS coordinator. I staff the council. And Genevieve Lettheiser, the admin specialist for the state uh, Montana State Library. Evan, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Evan Hammer, Digital Library Administrator here at the Montana State Library. And Sean? Sean Anderson, I'm the Grants and Contracts Coordinator for the state. Looks like Alan and Mike are working on joining us. Alan, can you hear us? Mike, can you hear us? Uh, if you're referring to me, yes, I can. Yes. Do you want to introduce yourself, Mike? Uh, yeah, sorry for being late. Uh, I was in another meeting. Uh, but Mike Powell, Yellowstone County, GIS manager. I'm also the past president of MEGAP. Um, was a little surprised. I mean, I knew we were having, you guys were having a meeting pretty quick here, but when I saw the agenda and then we were on it, um, we were a little shocked by the... Oh redundancy of it. So uh, yeah, I'm here. I can give the report and everything, but then I will have a few questions af afterwards during during that time. So thank you. Sounds good, Mike. Thanks. Alan. Alan, are you available to introduce yourself or in the chat? Yeah, I'm trying to get going here. You betcha. There we go. There we are. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Alan Armstrong here with the Bureau of Land Management in the Billings, Montana office here for Montana and the Dakotas. So I'm your uh, federal, one of uh, two federal representatives here on the meeting. So happy to be here today. Great. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Commissioner Burnett joined us. Tom, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Tom Burnett in Bozeman. I'm a state library commissioner. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Thank you. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda?
Hearing none, our first order of business is approval of the January 25th meeting minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to those minutes? Hearing none, is there a motion to improve the minutes as presented? Yes, Valentine, I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a second? I, I will second those that motion. Thanks, Eric. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Thank you all. The next order of business is approval of the council bylaws. As we talked about at the January 25th meeting with the, the reseating of a brand new council, we needed to recreate the bylaws. And I want to send a huge thank you to Maureen, who did the lion's share of the work in drafting the bylaws, and then Eric's input as well. So we have draft bylaws for the council to consider. Um, I'd like to call for a motion to accept the bylaws and then we can have discussion. I would make that motion that we accept the bylaws as submitted. Is there a second? I second. That was Lee. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Is there any discussion about the contents of the bylaws? Any feedback for us to consider? I guess I'll pipe in. I just want to thank Maureen. She did the the uh, the bulk of these this edits when we met a couple weeks ago to review everything. She had done a, an exceptional job of, of bringing everything forward to meet with the new uh, Geospatial Information Advisory Council naming convention and the membership. So thank you to her for doing all the work. Any other discussion? Any feedback, any concerns? Okay. All right, so we have a motion to accept the bylaws as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, thank you. That kind of business is is not always the most glamorous, but it's necessary for us to conduct our work. So I, I really do appreciate it. And then the final piece of business for the council is action on our geospatial data standards workflow. Erin, do you want to walk the council through the workflow? Sure. <clears throat> do you want to do the dates? Oh, did I miss the dates? I apologize. Thank you so much. So we have proposed meeting dates to carry us through the rest of the calendar year. Uh, starting in April, another meeting in, uh, these, these are proposed. We don't necessarily need to meet all of these times, but you'll recall that at our last meeting, we talked about maybe having a little bit more frequent, shorter meetings for us to conduct business, especially as we're reforming as a council. So we talked about uh, shorter, more frequent meetings, as well as a council retreat to, to bring us all together in person at some point in time. The important date proposed is that April 23rd date where we need to take action on the grant submittals uh, in order to make sure that we're following our administrative rules for that program. Does the, the meeting dates, 
the proposed business meeting dates look okay to most of you? They look good to me. Valentine says they look good. Hey, Jenny, this is Karen. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't have an opportunity to look at the, um, I think there was a doodle or poll or something sent out and I do have a couple of conflicts. Um, yeah, the 23rd I'll be in Europe, but it, since it's only a one hour mm -hmm. meeting, I can see, I could probably log in for that one. And the September dates would be problematic for me personally. Okay. I don't know what the protocol is for getting a stand in or something mm -hmm. for, for my seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think a state agency is allowed to send that. I think a, a state agency can send a, a designee. Okay. For your for those dates, if you can't make it. And as long as we have a quorum, that's what's necessary to conduct business. Mike Powell has a hand. Mike. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Thank you. Um. I just wanted to bring up the conference for the mega conference, um, which is on the 15th to the 18th, which would be a week before the 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew you guys were thinking about doing maybe just a little round table or something or a little, I'm not sure exactly what you guys were planning mm -hmm. on, but you weren't having a full meeting, obviously. Um, well, I mean, I didn't know if you wanted to put that on your schedule or not. That's a good point, Mike. And and for the council members, the, the mega conference, as you know, is that week prior to the April 23rd meeting. And as we talked about, we we decided not to have a full council meeting there just because of the, the workload for staff. And we don't we get some attendance, but we don't always get great attendance from conference attendees. But we do want to have some kind of presence, a panel or a, a um, a way to introduce the council members to the, the conference attendees. We're thinking something maybe late in the afternoon of that uh, Tuesday, the 16th. Uh, it's already been scheduled. It's Thursday oh, okay. because Tuesday, the conference isn't, uh, the conference is only Wednesday and Thursday. Um, so it's been scheduled and that's part of my report. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. But I know not all council members are attending. So, and it's not a meeting. That's why it's not on this. Yeah, memo. Okay. And, and that's fine, but I just thought maybe you want to, you know, for a little, I'm just advertising for our, our little group there. Sorry. Um, proposed council retreat date. Looking at your calendars, do any of these dates look better than others? June and July are better for me. Okay. So what are, what's the purpose of, of us doing a retreat? I, I'm not absolutely against it, but I've never been a big fan of retreats. I, I don't see the need for multiple day meetings other than a conference type of thing. So, but that's, that's just me. So I'm fine with five month, five meetings as they are and in a council retreat. I'm I just I don't if if everyone wants it, then I'll figure out, but I'm not a fan of retreats. I don't feel that they serve a purpose other than to have everyone get together and do whatever we do, I guess. So but that's that's just my personal side. So there's a professional, if there's a truly professional meeting need to do it, then I'll go ahead and do it. But I don't, I'm, I'm not a proponent of retreats or groups for just the sake of getting together type of thing. So. Thanks. That's, Thanks for your feedback. And, and if other people feel the same, this it's certainly by no means obligatory. The, the idea behind it was that this is a new council. Um, and we have new members who haven't served and, and members that were on the previous council that are continuing to serve. So it was more a chance to, to get people together, help the council get to know one another, become comfortable working together, review some of our strategic priorities and, and talk about some of the, the changes that have occurred in the legislation and, and how that cha those changes might shape things like how we approach the, the geospatial information plan in the future 
um, priorities for around the grants, that kind of thing. Would you like me to add stuff? Yeah. yeah. And some of the other, um, in addition to what Jenny had said, or to kind of expand upon that, um, we had discussed uh, frequency of uh, different theme leads presenting to the council and reviewing themes. In addition to, you know, the geospatial information plan is, is new uh, in that there's different requirements that are um, expected of it. It's not the annual land plan that we had in the past. So I think if we came together and um, in the capacity to understand what the best uh, plan would look like for all the responsibilities we have under the MGIA, I think that was something else that we um, would focus on um, in addition to the priorities that Jenny had mentioned on how we want to move forward with um, future budgets and uh, future uh, information development of the framework themes. <clears throat> and there are probably some NISGIC um, uh, national items that I'd bring to the council to try to get further involvement from our council um, with, uh, with NISGIC as well. But we're happy to leave it up to the council. Hey, this is Alan. Um, do you think that it's possible to maybe combine some of these retreat type topics with our regular scheduled meetings? I'm just thinking it, you know, you, you got one date you're planning for a, uh -huh. a retreat and there's a good chance that a you know, maybe a third or more of the folks wouldn't be able to make it for one of those times. But if you spread some of those topics out and maybe had some, some, you know, retreat type discussion during the regular, our regular meetings, you know, I, for one, you know, I, I feel bad that I, I haven't made it up for one yet. Uh, but my, my intentions are to, to be there in person uh, at, at, for all the meetings. This one, I, I, I thought was kind of a short one, so it probably wasn't uh -huh. worth coming. Yeah. So, but if yeah. we if we made them longer, like the last one, I, I felt bad I missed. Um, and and having more, you know, maybe time for a retreat type discussion during those regular meetings, okay. you're going to hit hit more of the people because there's more of them, and you've spread out the topics. You're not just hinged on one day. Um, you know, I I don't I I really liked the retreats we had for. Uh, Major. I thought those were really beneficial. We covered a lot of ground. We really set some goals and and uh, objectives for the for the next year. I I don't know if that would be the same with this council. It's it's just a different mix. Um, but you know, I'm not against it. But I'm just wondering if if we could combine more retreat type discussion activities during and around our scheduled meeting days, mm -hmm. if we could make an effort to get there as much as possible. I, I think we could. It would probably mean the meetings are longer, which is fine. Um, and I really would encourage people to participate in person. I think there's a lot gained by having people come together and, and get to know one another rather than just attending on Zoom. I think we're just more productive as a council in that way. Mm -hmm. I think the, the other thing is just basic meeting logistics that... Um, we're going to have to get you here and then get you all home. <laughs> and so to not spend two nights in Helena, we'd have to decide uh, whether you wanted to start early or end really late. And then we have the ability to cover hotel costs as uh, part of the budget of the council. So um, I guess that's another thing to discuss. I think we could uh, probably go about it systematically, Alan, prioritize what needed to be done first, probably the plan. Um, and, uh, I would think that maybe we could do that in July and make, mm -hmm. make, make a long day in July, mm -hmm. um, starting probably earlier. Um, and uh, so you're, no, you, Maureen's the furthest. So just kind of working with you guys to understand how that's going to look like, I think is, mm -hmm. we could do it though. 
yeah, just it just might, you know, spread it out a little bit more. You know, we've got certain topics, you know, in July we'll cover a certain topics, September, November. We got three dates. Good chance, you know, you're gonna get the majority of the people there during those times as opposed to just picking one retreat date. It's a good chance a lot of people might not make it. Uh, just a just a thought. You know, I, I don't mind a long day myself. I I would come up for a long day and probably still come back that same day. I probably wouldn't stay over, but you know, a nice long day where we we have some retreat discussion type things uh, on the agenda, and you know, have some time to get to know people a little bit, have some presentations and things like that. It, I guess I would prefer that maybe as opposed to just picking one day and trying to shoot for that. Shoot, you know, have everything during that time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess I just want to, uh, again, you know, it's the, uh, obviously I'm an outsider. This is uh, a council decision to be made, but, but I hear the talk about presentations and getting to know each other. And, and I feel like it's really important to emphasize there's, there's a lot of work that the council needs to do. Um, and so I think that's part of the idea of a, a retreat getting together, sitting down, hammering out a plan. And, you know, they're, they're very short time frames on these work products that needs to be done. So uh, just want to emphasize that and remind the council of that. I think that um, I'll, I'll kind of second what Evan was saying there in that I know for my time, I know that there's a handful of things that we need to get done that are products that we probably need to produce. You know, the, uh, uh, how are we going to adjust the new the the land plan to this to the what it's the new format? Actually, produce something. You know, instead of making putting the reliance back on the staff of the state library to do all of that to be able to come together and have dedicated time to have those conversations and maybe even get some work done draft together. I personally work a lot better in working meetings like that. You're going to get my full attention when we can sit down for a day and, and work on this rather than me having to do work outside of a council meeting. Um, I think the, the, there is a benefit for having a, a longer span of time in some, something like a retreat. Um, but again, I'll, I'll, echo back what Aaron, what Alan said about when we had the when we were starting the makeup retreats they were very focused very we had an agenda we had a, a facilitator um, we worked through specific goals and products and they were very much working meetings um, during the day and I felt like they were very productive in that way so if there are um, pieces of work that we need to do as a group I would encourage us to find a time to set some specific time aside for that. Now, does it need to be three days? Maybe not. Um, but I also feel like this is, there's more conver more depth of conversation that we would get from a focus day like that than we get in a standard meeting. I think the intention is two days. Um, and I put, I put, I picked blocks and if needed, we could also wrap it around one of the other, one of the standard business meetings. So, um, which is why I chose July 10th through the 12th. And, mm -hmm. and this might not be surprising, but it's very difficult to align Jenny and Mike's calendar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming it'd be mm -hmm. just as hard to align all of yours as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these were the times where it, it works along with all of the travel that we both have to do and the our partner meetings that we're committed to as well. Um, this time in September is typically um, when we have our that that quarterly meeting, um, and I thought it could work well at this time. But I I actually would prefer probably earlier in the year to get some things <laughs> knocked out. That would be my comfort level, especially gearing up for next legislative session. Um, I think that that's important. I think one thing that might help us make this decision would be a little bit more specificity around what the agenda would be. What what are the the specific 
work tasks and products that we need to create and, and come out of this. And I don't, I don't know that this is an ask for you guys to create or just a general conversation that we need to have. Um, but, but what are, what are the actions that we need to take that, that might take that more uh, focused time to produce? Well, like you said, Lee, you know, we do want to sit down and hammer out uh, changes to the geospatial plan and historically uh, when we've relied, in, relied on a subcommittee of the larger council, the bulk of that work did fall to the staff and, and the, the subcommittee um, was a little bit more of a rubber stamp at times. And we really do want council participation in crafting what that plan, what the goals of the plan look like moving forward. And so the, the idea is to have those concentrated work times on, on those kinds of things. And then we do want to take a hard review of the grant program itself and understand how um, how we can make improvements to the grant program, especially now that we have the flexibility to have a two-year grant cycle. Um, those are two critical needs. Um, the next action item today is looking at the, the data standards workflow. Uh, we've talked about wanting to address a statewide addressing standard once that data standard workflow is in place. So that's a, another need that we have. Um, those are those are three things that I, I hope we can focus on either through um, a combination of business meetings and concentrated work sessions or through a retreat. I guess I, I feel like the, the standards piece might be better suited to um, meetings uh, and the other two, some dedicated, a significant dedicated time for that, you know, a morning or an afternoon. So maybe if our, if our mm -hmm. couple of these meetings are a longer day and we dedicate like mm -hmm. a third of the day is going to be this topic. Um, I'm I'm not sure if we can get there or not. I think if we're all in person, maybe there's a better chance of that. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm supporting or not. Mm -hmm. I I tend to be supportive of retreats because I think that I personally work well in that environment and we feel like I can get a lot done. But I definitely respect the time of everybody else on the council. Valentine or Maureen or Karen, what, do you have any preferences? No, no. Not strong preference, um, but it'd be pretty easy, I think, to make it a, a meeting plus, mm -hmm. you know, do a one night here maybe, and then work mm -hmm. the next morning and then leave mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. Something in between a full retreat and a, mm -hmm. just a standard business meeting. But mm -hmm. just time to work on some harder issues. That could work well. Yeah, I like that idea too. Uh, a meeting plus, uh, that's a good way to call it. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. we have a little social time in the evening to get to know people a bit more and and, yeah. and concentrate on some, you know, you know, some focused topics maybe the next day. Mm -hmm. I don't have a strong preference. Um, I guess I would lean a little bit towards the shorter, you know, the 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 long day or the meeting plus model mm -hmm. than than a whole. Mm -hmm three-day thing but um but i'm open to the longer one too if that's that's where we go i like the idea of getting together it it's easier to brainstorm i think when you're all in the same room together um for me it's a day up and a day back as well as a full day of meetings so um yeah i like to get as much done as i can if i'm coming <laughs> so mm -hmm. whatever the council decides mm -hmm. i will work with well, what if we do this then? We go with the proposed dates for the business meetings, but add a half a day either before or after the July 11th date for a longer, more more concentrated time. I would say even September as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. if the council is... We know, we know Karen, for both of those, you're saying both, both, both of those. Yeah. Okay. And we can always... We can always change that and and have shorter meetings if we feel like we're getting through what we want to get through. But 
And I guess another approach is to bring back a subgroup um, to do work between meetings if uh, if we can't come together mm -hmm. as the full council. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we right. should try that day, day and a half piece before we focus on bringing a subgroup back for those mm -hmm. purposes. I think it'd be great to, to okay. work as a larger group. It's, since we're a smaller group than what we used to be, uh -huh. um, I think it's worth worth the time and effort. Then we'll slate July to start discussing the mm -hmm. geospatial information plan. All right. Is there a motion to approve the meeting dates as presented with the understanding that the July and possibly the September meetings would be a day and a half long meetings with some flexibility to for us to look at people's schedules? Sure, I'll move to approve the meeting schedule. There's second. I'll second. Eric, thanks. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. The motion carries. Thanks. All right, now let's talk about the, the geospatial data standard. Okay. Which document would you like to um, The memo or Yeah, go ahead. So the... Okay. So as part of the Montana uh, GIS um, strategic planning process, it was indicated that we should um, understand and create a, um, a workflow for how we are going to move forward with um, creating standards and best practices uh, for Montana. And um, this was presented at the last council meeting. We went over briefly the, um, the workflow uh, that was presented as a part of the greater business plan and um <clears throat> and so basically um we have the memo here and then if you want to go ahead and open up that other one as well i can and to review um the these the strategic planning process um was facilitated by um apgeo we we reached out to the um greater geospatial community and surveying community and all our other um, communities that are important stakeholders to us. Um, and uh, we identified uh, goals that we thought would be best to um, help us move forward and achieve what we're trying to achieve as a part of um, um, the, the greater um, Geospatial Information Act. And um, Lee Mackholtz and, uh, um, and some folks internally along with Jenny Stapp and myself, uh, were a part of the team to help manage this process, um, going through um, all of the goals that had been identified and uh, approved, endorsed by the council, approved by the commission, and then working through individual business plans to help achieve those, um, those goals. This has come out of the specific business plan for uh, creating governance uh, for uh, geospatial information. Uh, and this workflow basically outlines the process that we would utilize to bring forth a, uh, a standard, um, could be a standard, could be a best practice, could be a, a workflow, a policy, but this is what we would utilize um, in conjunction with our partners, in conjunction with the appropriate state authority, um, 
whether it's a CIO, CDO, or protect perhaps a different agency, the council, um, and then of course, uh, um, MAGIP is in here as well. And so this is this looks a little different, but I think this is a better chart because it's got um, the color key and uh, it's just laid out better than the other one I presented at the last meeting. So basically this workflow would would take us through what it looks like uh, when accounting. Can you zoom in by any chance to the first part? Um, it's because I know I can't see it. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, we someone identifies a need for um, a policy, a best practice, a standard, a workflow. And that is brought to the Montana State Library. The council could identify the need. Any kind of working groups could identify a need. Um, outside entities could identify the need. But that that need is identified for that specific standard. And then we go through this process. So it's brought to us and we start to review it internally as an agency and then with the specific bodies that have been identified. So we decide... Do we have the authority to create or adopt a standard? And, and if it's yes, then we move forward with the profit process. If it's no, then we refer to the specific agency um, that would have that authority to create that standard. And we could give them our workflow. Uh, if it is geospatial in nature and they want our assistance, we are certainly here to help them with that. But there are going to be some um, policies that are just not under our purview and they need to go to the CIO's office or the uh, uh, chief data data officer's office. After we identify um, that we do have the authority, we start with the next step and that would be, um, is it a proposed or existing standard? Um, and uh, does it need re redevelopment or revision? So we have standards in place right now. Um, we are, uh, we've adopted, um, not through this process, uh, but certain standards such as using um, the national emergency number the Nina Association number uh, for our next Gen 911 work. And um, when an update occurs, a revision, it would take it through this process. Or is it a brand new standard that's never been tested? So um, if it's yes, <laughs> if it needs development or revision, uh, then we would take it to the uh, an MGAC work group. So a, a work group does need to be created and I would say that it could be standard specific or it could be uh, specific to the topic or it could just be a, a work group that reviews all standards. I think that's one of the things that we'd wanna, once this was proposed uh, and endorsed by the council, that's one thing we'd wanna work out in upcoming meetings, what that looks like. All right, um, so moving, if you could, yeah, thank you, and that way. All right, um, through the work group, prototypes would be uh, developed. We would re reach out to our stakeholder communities and uh, ask for feedback. Those communities, which is very obvious to us, would be like the MAGIP community, um, working with them to get official feedback on the standard. Once that's been approved, um, we would just continue through the process and that that prototype has been approved and uh, we would go to actually drafting that standard um, going to a formal peer review, which would be testing um, uh, testing the the standard itself. After the peer review has been uh, vetted and approved, uh, now we'll go this way. <laughs> You're back over. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Genevieve. Um, uh, we would seek to have uh, uh, MGF then endorse and finalize that standard. Once that standard has been endorsed, then we, we, okay, we have this wonderful standard. Now, what do we do with it? Um, we would uh, formally adopt the standard and then, as needed, work with others uh, to, my new favorite word, um, uh, promulgate or get additional endorsement. So that could be where we want additional endorsement from uh, MARLs, registered land surveyors. We would like additional endorsement from MAGIP. We would like endorsement from the CIO's office. Um, it depends on the specific standard itself. And um, and then we'd work on um, uh, promulgating, basically spreading the word about the standard, the benefits of the standard, how to use the standard. So it'd be some sort of coordination, outreach, and training regarding that standard. 
um, and work with uh, our agency partners on implementation and use of that standard. Um, and hopefully seeking also, in addition to um, uh, the specific partners, perhaps even um, uh, adoption of standards by uh, local government, regional government, tribal. Um, and then, of course, uh, we would go through a process once the standard has been created on how often that needs to be reviewed. And so um, the standard review would basically take us back up to the top. Um, and so... I think that, uh, I think it's pretty, well, I don't know if it's straightforward, but I think it's a good process. It's been vetted. We, we talked a lot about this. In, in fact, um, there was a, a, a lot of deliberation of, you know, how it starts, where it starts, who it goes to. And um, I think we've done a good job vetting it internally. And um, and then of course the color key helps on what, what, what actions, so if you just scroll down just a tiny little bit. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what's entailed by like where we need our external uh, uh, groups and stakeholders? So that's the greens, the the orange is the MGAC uh, involvement, and then the blue is uh, is uh, what the internal um, would what would be internal to the Montana State Library work. So, any questions? Karen. Um, yeah, I, I like this, um, doc, this, uh, workflow document better, um, with the revision. It looks really nice. Um, there's just one area of it that I found a little bit confusing. This is kind of a nitpicky detail comment, but, um, if you, if you could scroll over towards the left, um, that area where it says final standards and it's, there's a line flowing from the diamond shape above and then down towards MSL formally adopt standards. Um, those lines are kind of on top of each other. It makes it a little confusing. Like I spent oh, a long time thinking that you were supposed to okay. flow into the final standard, but then I was like, oh no, I think you're bypassing that from yes. that yes. original time. Yeah. yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And and one's a no line and one's a yes line. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah we will fix that yeah does everybody see what what karen's pointing out yeah, yeah. okay yeah okay other questions for aaron i'd like to call for a motion and then we can have further council discussion is there a motion to accept the geospatial data standards workflow? I move. Is there a second? I'll second. Valentine, thank you. Okay, is there additional discussion? Questions, comments, concerns? I, I'm guessing this is going to help in any replication that the state library does with data coming in from other entities like counties or whatever. If we have a standard, it's going to make your job easier to assemble those standards in, into, into one, you know, into the products that you deliver. I'm, I'm guessing that's one of the goals, which, which is good. You're still going to have people that don't play. And you're going to have to work with those. They're, they're going to do their own thing because you don't yeah. have any teeth. We don't have a stick. We do have a stick with the MG Act because of the grants. And so That's if, right, Alan. Gonna, yep. if we have a standard and you're you're putting forth a proposal and you're not following the standard, you know, you're not going to get funded. Uh, so I think this is great. I think having standard, we're, we're trying this a lot in the BLM and it takes decades to get some of these things through. So uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit better luck here at the state level, but uh, having a standard is needed. You just got to realize there's going to be a lot of people that don't play. Um, but, you know, you have some teeth with the council to at least, you know, kick those aside that that are asking for funds that, that don't follow the accepted standard. And I, I hope this helps a lot with the replication issues uh, when you assemble your, your collective data sets. Thanks, Alan. Other discussion? Is 
there any public comment? Hearing none, we have a, a motion to approve the standards for quote document. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, now the work begins. Thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Roll up your sleeves, Gonna everyone. Send everyone a message. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, moving on to our discussion items. We wanted to update you on our conversations about a Montana imagery repository. I didn't know if Evan wanted to go first because he um, mm. he's in training. Evan, are you good with the timing right now? Yeah, behind? timing. I, I'm good either way. Okay, go all ahead. right. Um, so we have uh, been working with... Um, <clears throat> With several state agencies um, regarding the need for an imagery repository, um, there is a lot of information that's being collected um, that maybe isn't up to standard. Um, and with this new workflow, we can <laughs> uh, start to implement geospatial standards for imagery data collection. Um, so it had um, it been a, a request that we had been seeing from um, other larger state agencies for a while, um, uh, MDT, DNRC, several others. And then also we always get uh, random requests, um, I would say from local government, even federal government of, hey, we have this imagery, can you serve it out for us? And so knowing that um, we started working to put together a business case um, uh, with the MDT, kind of outlining our major goals um, and what an image repository would look like. And so I'm just giving a very high level approach to this. Um, and so right now with the imagery working group, um, we are uh, looking at uh, creating a plan for imagery similar to the elevation plan and the land cover plan and um, using very similar steps uh, to how we approached uh, the elevation plan in that, first of all, we're understanding need, then we're gonna understand um, what is out there. So we're looking to do an analysis of uh, uh, some sort of inventory of, of the information that's out there and is inaccessible. Um, we know that there are large um, repositories that sit with agencies or sit at local government or maybe still exist on paper form. And um, our goal is to uh, start by um, moving all of our imagery into a standard repository and working with um, state agencies to potentially move their imagery into a standard repository. And in addition to that, um, eventually start to branch out and offer that um, uh, to local government as well. That's a very high level um, uh, approach to what we are looking at possibly uh, doing. We uh, currently don't have uh, the funding for this. And so we are working uh, through our legislative processes um, and uh, with our constituents to see which would be the, the best uh, approach forward. I don't know how much detail we want to go into <laughs> there, but um, we have also been scoping the, the technical needs of what that looks like what, with um, with potential partners. And uh, of course, Esri being one of them, because we have a um, our enterprise license agreement through them. And so um, with the help of the uh, MSDI imagery working group and some of the partnerships with uh, state government, we will uh, uh, go forward with a hopefully a legislative request for next year to have an imagery repository so we can have centralized standardized storage for all um, folks in Montana to be able to access this very important imagery. In addition to that, we are exploring the use of technology as a state of um, um, site scan technology, uh, which is an Esri product that manages uh, drone imagery collection. Um, there are a few agencies that are testing it now. 
and um, and we are going to work on uh, um, a we're going to put together a small group of agencies that have the need to use the shared technology um, and then understand uh, what their needs are for for um, this type of data collection moving forward. It's kind of a different um, avenue because this is uh, that is more drone related versus these other data collection efforts. So it's kind of like a two pronged uh, approach there. Um, but we do have some agencies that are exploring that technology right now. Um, and I just wanted to, to briefly bring that up as kind of considering that um, a little different right now. So um, I guess high level, that's what I wanted to uh, uh, present to the council to let you know uh, which direction we're heading. I don't have any documents for you to review today. Um, encourage you all to attend the imagery working group uh -huh. and hopefully maybe by July, if not September, um, uh, we'll have some documentation, not a plan, but something for, for the council to review um, for the imagery repository. And it, I think the next meeting of the imagery working group is next Wednesday, March 20th. Uh, is correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to be at that meeting, but Troy in, uh, Troy will be running that. He and I usually uh, partner on uh, running those meetings. And um, then we'll also have a the ability to have a working group meeting at the Big Sky Geocon, which is always nice to have the in-person meetings. Um, and we have a regularly scheduled cadence because like, like the council, there's a lot of work to get done in this realm. Um, uh, when it comes to uh, gearing up for next legislative session and some of the asks that we're going to put forward. Questions for Aaron about the, the goals or intent of the image repository, imagery repository. One thing I will mention um, that outside of cadastral, um, historic imagery is probably one of our bigger requests for geographic information. Um, and I would say a very common use um, for the request is uh, water rights. So researching yeah. water rights um, and uh, like there's that legal workflow. All right, let's move on to GIS enterprise architecture and Evan has that update for the council. Hello again. Um, I'm just going to touch on uh, a bit of a presentation that uh, I did for our commission, the State Library Commission, uh, about a month ago. Uh, we can provide you with a link to that recording and materials I had there, um, if that would be helpful. Uh, basically, the State Library uh, last reviewed and refreshed our GIS computing architecture in 2014. Um, and so it's kind of, I'd say, long overdue for a refresh uh, at this time. Um, there have been any number of significant changes that you're all likely familiar with. Uh, on the GIS software side, uh, of course, we're, in, we're into Pro now, ArcMap, and um, uh, all the other ArcGIS desktop tools are rapidly becoming obsolete. Um, at, at the time in 2014, we were really focused on server and, and our database environment and making sure that those provided access or server access to uh, the services that we wanted folks uh, to be able to use um, and to support our applications. Um, now we're talking about a complete uh, system uh, refresh. Uh, so uh, GIS data storage, uh, certainly server, but of course nowadays we're talking about enterprise, uh, of which server is just a part. Um, uh, database environment, uh, virtual desktops, uh, to be able to continue to do the work that we need to do, um, uh, particularly in, in uh, for supporting the MSDI. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ArcGIS Online has matured uh, and is a very different environment than it was and offers uh, increasingly new flexibility and, and uh, functionality uh, as, as we move forward. Uh, beyond just the GIS software change, significant 
just general computing changes. 2014 was the early days of cloud computing. Uh, virtual desktops were a new thing at that time. And uh, and then of course our data sets, spatial data sets, but really all data has just grown exponentially since that time. And then finally, uh, significant changes to uh, workspace expectations largely prompted by COVID. Um, we uh, we had to learn how to work remotely. All of our staff work remotely and continue to do our work for um, a, a few years uh, with COVID and then our, our own challenges with building issues. Uh, and then on top of that, the, the governor has pushed agencies to be more mobile ready. Um, and I don't know if this is another point or if this is just a symptom that's come out of all that, but uh, all of this has resulted in a, a bit of fragmentation in, in the environment that we set up in 2014. So um, we're looking to uh, optimize our environment for our desktop and, and server software needs, provide more flexibility, get our workstations closer to the data, um, and have a flexible platform that's sized for our needs, but can be um, uh, scaled to uh, handle either spikes or ongoing growth. Um, and, and of course, we just want to be within the vision uh, for state IT uh, as we move forward. And this is similar to uh, what we've seen implemented at DEQ to support their GIS needs. And MDT is currently looking into a similar um, approach. Um, I think the last thing I'll just mention here is the timeline. Uh, we started this process in 2021 when we actually initiated the um, system architecture design. Uh, in 2022, we developed a request for information and, and sought feedback from vendors on uh, primarily costs and approach to implementing that new system architecture. Uh, and last year, we sought funding. Uh, and we're exploring procurement models, and now we're um, seeking long-term funding uh, and looking to perform an initial build-out. Um, wanted to bring this to you largely because uh, there could be impacts, uh, or there will almost certainly be impacts to the MSDI data management workflows. Um, there will be potential changes to our MSDI web services. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, we're seeking funding support. Um, what exactly that looks like will be determined. Uh, potentially some MGIA funds will be needed for uh, some of this work. But even when we seek legislative support, uh, we hope that MGIA would be willing to, the, the council would be willing to speak on our behalf, whether it's to our commission, to the legislatures or whoever the decision makers might be involved. So that's the, the quick version. Uh, Happy to take any questions. I do need to leave shortly. So if you have questions, I'd rather get them now, um, though I can come back on if necessary. Thanks, Evan. Questions for Evan? Um, question in terms of a, a lot of this work is work that many of us are facing um, and many of our constituents are, are facing. How how much of this are you willing and or able to share in terms of some of the details or recommendations that you've uh -huh. received out of that um, mm -hmm. with with folks? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't know that there are any restrictions and we are certainly mm -hmm. happy. Obviously, yeah. specific technical details will be need to need to be catered to uh, specific needs but um yeah i think we're mm -hmm. very open to that mm -hmm. yeah, yeah I, I think a lot of people are struggling with this overall approach um and it's difficult for for those of us with less resources especially local government to recreate that wheel of that whole process that you just said you went through for two years yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose I should mention another piece that I, I didn't uh, touch on before, and that is for a long time, we've had a vision uh, of, a, of a GIS uh, data workflow environment that allows our partners uh, external to the state library and even external to state government uh, to participate through various uh, remote editing tools. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not 
going to replace the need for a local government to have <laughs> GIS uh, infrastructure in place, but at least to the extent that they're contributing to MSDI themes, uh, this may be pretty far out in, in the build out process, but we would like to be able to um, uh, provide a platform where uh, those partners can directly be involved in the process. Yeah, that sounds a lot like what uh, I do with the, with the county where we're co-authoring those data sets. So yeah, awesome. it works well. We'll probably be presenting on this in the future at um, maybe a tech session one day or uh, <laughs> or Big Sky Geocon or just having a separate presentation if the council's interested and the community is interested. Um, it's been quite the process and I think we've all learned a lot over the years um, on how to take a hybrid approach and um, all the tools, the contracting tools that we've utilized, and then just the reliability of ArcGIS Online alone to understand how that can be utilized um, um, in addition to an enterprise system, I think is pretty interesting, but we've spent a lot of, um, a lot of time um, with uh, experts. And so um, we'd be happy to, to help share that information. Um, we probably could share our architecture redesign mm -hmm. with you today, pulling maybe some key names of machines and things off of it. But um, I think that the other thing is um, another like learning process is we went uh, with Esri because, you know, they're the, the technical experts there and, um, and they kind of give you the, um, the platinum diamond edition and you know what you can uh uh i guess then we were working with other experts to understand this it's like oh okay well they give you the best ultimate scenario for architecture now if you uh if you don't have the funding for it here's the next uh version to achieve optimum uh need so so we'd be happy to share it i've learned a lot for sure me too <laughs> I'll take everything Other questions you send me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Lee, perhaps this could be also an upcoming um, discussion item of the local government, um, the, uh, the SIG that we work on. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions or discussion with Evan? I'll just echo Lee's, um, you know, saying we definitely, I know at DNRC, we're definitely struggling with these same questions and I suspect other state agencies are too. So we'll take whatever information we can get. And also just curious if, you know, something to think about as the process unfolds, like is there room for other state agencies like sharing pieces yes. or parts of this whole endeavor? Absolutely. I think it's some, yeah, it's something we've discussed. Um, I think that there might be some smaller agencies where we're currently hosting some of their services through our managed services environment um, that we will bring over um, to this new environment. And I think that it should be, we should have these discussions for sure. Definitely. Yes, I agree with both Karen and Lee. Any, any information we can get is most helpful. Great. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Um, the, the next discussion item is one that is, is something that we talked about at your last meeting, just trying to build in some time for any discussion from council members in your roles as representatives to different sectors. I think this is something that we sort of need to start to build a habit around, but I wanted to make sure we had a place on the, the agenda for that kind of discussion. And you can expect to see that this discussion item on your future agendas. So uh, just a time for any open discussion from council members.
Anything anybody wants to bring up? Okay, like I said, you'll, you'll be sure to see this in future meetings. Let's move on then to our standing reports and information items, starting with the MAGIP report. Mike, again, thanks for being with us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, don't have much to report as we gave our report a couple months ago, and uh, I guess we're still going to try to figure out, I mean, if you guys are going to continue with this more meetings, um, my reports or make it reports will be a lot shorter now <laughs> because of the, the more of the meetings you have. Um, I, again, I don't have a whole lot to report in addition to what we reported last, last time. Um, just want to bring up the conference again. That's been our big thing, um, that we've been working on lately. Uh, we have, um, uh, it's the 15th to the 18th, I believe is the time frame on that in April. And it's uh, the, the first two days are workshops. We have those all out there and scheduled. Um, I'm not sure if the tech sessions, which are on Wednesday and Thursday, are out there yet. Um, if they're not, they're pretty well organized. I think they're on sched right now. Um, so, yeah. and I, we're, we're, we're full. I mean, we have a lot of, um, I think our attendants are, what do we have? We have like 15 sponsors at this moment. And I think a hundred people have registered at this point. Um, it's still got some time before the early bird is done with that. Um, sponsorship, we're doing well. Um, it, it seems to be moving pretty smoothly. Um, other than that, I don't have a whole lot to report. Um, if anybody's got any questions for me that I'm more than happy to answer um also just you know keep make up in in the loop with the I, I know i wrote down the times that you have listed for the next meetings and stuff but i know you said that those are fluid um but yeah just just definitely keep us in the loop so that we can you know have a little time to prepare for our, our reports and stuff well do we appreciate it hey mike i just dropped the um sketch in the meeting chat, I don't know. It looks like it's only going to Genevieve, so I don't know if she can share it with I'll everyone. Yeah, oh. I'll send it out. <laughs> Appreciate that, Eric. Thank you. Any questions for Mike? We we'll look forward to seeing you next month. Yeah, absolutely. You're all invited, of course. And uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's going to be a good time, I think. Moving on to the coordinator's report, Aaron. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. Uh -oh. No, it's always like I have to practice how to share a screen again. <laughs> before this meeting because I have to go into presentation mode and then share. So just give me one second, please. Okay. Uh, Aaron, can I uh, cut in real quick while you're working on that? Feel free, please. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I, I also want to bring up our election for this year as well. Um, I'm mm -hmm. going to be giving out notices for our election. We have a VP, uh, three term for VP president, past president uh, running to this year. Also, our new, uh, well, it's not new, but we're bringing it back, the web administrator for our website. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, conference chair and uh, membership development is up for uh re-election this year. So I, I wanted to just highlight that as well, that uh, th th that announcement will be going out this week, hopefully in a couple days here. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, that was good addition. 
That's important stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so just have a few things to brief you on, try to go through this as quickly as possible. Um, Jenny did send out a uh, notification about the cadastral redesign, our soft launch. And I'm not gonna go through that um, because I don't wanna blow our beautiful presentations that we have planned for April. Um, uh, but we are currently uh, doing what, what is called the soft launch. We've uh, targeted um, specific communities to help us test that. Um, so we ask you as the council to please um, take some time to take a look at it. And then in addition to leave your comments through that specific form that we created, uh, I think that'll be up for the next couple months uh, during um, this launch. The, the real launch will take place in a few weeks. Um, and so far, all the feedback has been um, quite good. This is a long time coming. We're very excited to be at this point. Um, for those of you that may not understand why we had to do this big redesign is basically the platform it was built on is old technology and um, and we needed to update it to newer technology, embrace some of the newer technologies that are out there. Um, we also had to do some uh, intense work on the back end of things uh, to redesign some of the um, bigger web services that come uh, out of uh, some of the information from the Department of Revenue's office. And of course, this is um, all in partnership with the Department of the Montana Department of Revenue and then our local government data providers. Um, so it was a pretty big lift. We hired um, Langan to to to, um, um, to complete this, and they've done a great job as far as I know. They've been wonderful to work with, and so it's been a really um, good process. Uh, so really happy with that. Um, if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to me or um, Michael Fashaway or Kenny Kentner um, on this, but I, I can help on all your questions. Um, okay, so master purchase agreement. Um, the MPA, you've probably heard me talk about this in the past. Uh, I did not update the slide from last time because everything still exists in its current state. Uh, it is expired. Um, it is a, a procurement mechanism for Esri software that the state negotiates um, on behalf of local government. So all local government can purchase off of this. Universities, you have your own um, uh, procurement mechanism and uh, tribes have their own procurement mechanism. And so uh, I'm not sure if anyone's run into any issues with the lack of the master purchase agreement, but if you have, please uh, reach out to me and we can help facilitate that. But Esri has, um, I guess, they have committed to using the, um, the old MPA pricing so you can continue to get that discounted uh, pricing um, it's typically offered to government. I am working internally with our um, state IT uh, to finalize and get that uh, negotiated. Um, the other thing is that uh, typically state contracts um, are only allowed to last about 10 years and then they have to do a full refresh. It's a, a procurement rule or law. Um, and uh, this is um, over the 10 year mark. And so um, state IT is wanting to take a bigger look at, uh, at this um, agreement. So we use this agreement to then renegotiate our uh, the state's enterprise license agreement. And we use the pricing um, offered in this to set the pricing for the, for uh, that other agreement. So they're both used in tandem. And um, even if you uh, aren't aware that you, uh, if you're local government and you've never heard of this um, reference before, you are actually using it because all, um, all quotes, that are um, given to you and all licensing that is um, uh, purchased uh, through the state of Montana. Um, I'm sorry, not through the state of Montana, but in the state of Montana and your local government, you are actually accessing this procurement mechanism and um, your ESRI reps are required to um, use this. So it's very important to local government and I wanted to give you all the update and state government for that matter. Uh, on where we're at. So we're very grateful that 
Esri is still recognizing um, the last version uh, and allowing for the discounted pricing. And as soon as I hear more, we will uh, continue to keep you all in the loop. Any questions on that? Anyone have any issues with procurement that deal with <laughs> the ESRI uh, uh, pricing? <laughs> That's the only thing I can work on, not any general procurement issues. Yeah. Uh, no, we. I, I've always referenced this one in the past and as, as a local government, we, we always reference this and we did quotes. And I'm, I'm assuming, you know, our, our reps always did this. Uh, I know that we are running into, uh, we're just now opening for renewal of our next three-year term agreement for our ELA, our small government enterprise license agreement. Uh, we're hearing from our procurement officer that the, the, I guess I'll know more here in the next couple of weeks, but we're finding out that procurement's having, is having a little bit of heartburn over whether can we renew it whether we have to do it, I guess there, it comes into a value amount in terms of how much uh, the value of the agreement is and whether it meets certain um, limitations on whether we have to go out for an RFP or we have to, or if we could just say we're renewing this contract, so to speak, you know, yeah. versus just getting a brand new three year term agreement. So, mm -hmm. So it, it's um, it's actually a discussion that I started with our procurement folks, and then our the IT director and I are going to be getting back to them here, hopefully this week or next week, to see, uh, only because we're coming up on the end of our first ter three year term agreement. So okay. that 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 was an interesting thing is that there was there was some like an eighty thousand dollar value or something. I don't I don't have the notes in front of me unfortunately, but there was some value that was set that you know so um i don't know you know we have all the sole source sole source tech you know sole yeah. source documents you know and single or single source documents that we have as well as my uh writing writings that explain that you know if we were to go to something else it could you know this is you know we have a lot of third-party things built off of this technology already so right yeah but uh but yeah, just thought I'd put that. I don't know if others are going to run into that or not when they do things in, uh, or if that's something that you guys were running into or not in terms of the, the value of the, the agreement, so to speak, and renegotiating or uh -huh. negotiating that contract. So I see Maureen has her hand up as well. So I'll, um, I just, I thought I'd drop that info in there. I'll Thanks. know more hopefully in the next two weeks. Sounds good, Eric. Maureen? Um, yeah, I just want to thank the Aaron and the library for the work they do with this. Um, it became very real when I was talking with our S3 representative and he accidentally had me in Custer County, Colorado. And the price oh. difference was scary. So oh, wow. this, this is so appreciated that you guys do this for local government. And I just want to thank you. Thanks for that feedback, Maureen. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Maureen. And um Eric, I think that that potentially we we could um, put this as a future local government SIG topic. Uh, I think that there are other local governments that could find value in some of the um, work that you've done. Uh, I know that it that these EAs are pitched to local governments, and I whether it's I think it's apparent that I'm always representing Montana in my position, and that even includes you know, trying to negotiate some of these local government EAs even further, lower than what they're offering um, you and making sure that you are being represented by um, someone uh, who has a, a good understanding of, of, of Montana. Uh, I am going to, I think that uh, Scott Walter um, is going to be at the uh, Big Sky Geocon. He is your new rep, but then we also have a different rep, uh, Colin, and I'm forgetting his last name for some of the smaller governments in Montana. And I am advocating on the on local government's behalf because you are our data partners um, consistently uh, and, and asking Esri to, to have more uh, in 
person meetings and uh, show up a little more in Montana for uh, some of these um, working group meetings uh, and just site visits. And so um, more of on that to come, but I just want to let you know that I am working on your behalf to, to bring you guys the best deal possible. Well, that's, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I don't even know I, when we did our first EA, I don't even know if that came under if the pricing schema for that even came under the, uh, the state's purchasing, you know, procurement agreement or not. I have no idea if that was, and we're unique in that we, because our IT and because our GIS supports both city and county government, they mm -hmm. did quote us, we got a, a, a little bit better deal than what you would have had if I just bought it, you know, for one of the governments, I think, you know, type mm -hmm. of thing. So, um, so ours does support both the city and the county. And, but I know a lot of people on this call, I, I, I believe Lee has an EA. I know the city of Bozeman, I think has one. Um, I think Aaron, I think up in Cascade County or not Cascade, but city of Great Falls. I think he told me they mm -hmm. got an EA. Um, they're looking at it. I know Blaine County has one as well. Did you say Blaine? Yeah, well, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if if that purchase, if the, we could get a better price through, you know, a state negotiated purchase agreement, that would even be better. Huh. But uh, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I, so, but yeah, I appreciate it. And, and I'll know more here in the next couple, hopefully the next month about what, what's going on with our procurement process. So. Great. Okay. Um, Thanks for that, Eric uh, and Maureen. So next up, uh, so we already kind of talked about this a couple different ways and times in this meeting so far. Early bird registration ends Friday. And so if you are going to be attending, um, I would highly recommend that you get your registration um, in before Friday. If you are needing the council to uh, pay for your registration, that is something we offer all council members so you can go and represent the council. Um, and your organizations there, we certainly can do that. And the process would be to send that invoice to um, Genevieve and she can help get that uh, submitted. And then, um, could, uh, are you able to close that participant? Yeah, sorry. Um, and then in addition to that, so we have, um, I think we talked about this at the last council meeting, but the Montana Library Association and uh, um, Big Sky Geocon overlap. And um, we tried to get something on um, on Tuesday, but unfortunately conference doesn't even, the regular sessions don't begin until the 17th. And so um, we have been put into a council panel slot at 1.15. And so I think we need to discuss uh, how we want to approach this presentation to the makeup community and what that's going to look like. We can certainly, certainly do this over email. Um, we can, um, I, I think it's more of like a panel discussion and what we want the community to know about. Um, so I think uh, if we want, I could just finish mm -hmm. this and then we can do that discussion mm -hmm. or do you wanna have it right now, what that looks like? Does anybody have any initial feedback for Aaron about what this panel might look like? Um, I, I will say that the State Library Commission does something similar at the Library Association Conference every year. Um, we call it a conversation with the commission, and it's a chance for, it would be a chance for the council just to kind of talk about some things that are on our current agenda, and then to hear from people who attend about things that they think might be of interest or importance to the council and, and just have kind of an open forum of discussion. Oftentimes we'll, we'll actually, you know, allow people to list out topics at that event that they want to hear the council talk about. Yeah, I think that would be good. Um, and um, I think the other thing is just to understand who's gonna be able to be at this council mm -hmm. panel. Um, on Thursday at 1.15. I think it's one of the last mm -hmm. slots of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, could if, if you're planning to attend the conference, could you raise your hand? Val no. Valentine's not, okay. Okay. Competing conference. Oh, Georgia? No. Oh, uh, oh. Can we have Lee? Lee. Um, Eric? <clears throat> Maureen? Maureen? Maureen. Hey. Alan? Great. Good. 
we'll reach out to a couple yeah. of those council members that aren't here to find out if they're attending as well. So I could just do this over email as well. Mm -hmm. um, but if you guys have any ideas that mm -hmm. you want to share now, certainly yeah. we can bring it up. But I've been a part of a lot of different types of panels and mm -hmm. I've seen them done really well. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'll plan on mimicking some of the uh, things I've seen in the past. There looks like there's a hand up. Mm -hmm. Eric. Eric, is your hand up? Do you have a question? No, just missed one. Okay. okay, great. Nope, just didn't know that it didn't go down after a while. <laughs> okay. Um, and in two weeks is the, or less than two weeks is the um, uh, the mid year meeting in Washington D.C. Um, Evan uh, Lee Mackholz and myself will be attending that along with uh, staff member Caroline Basaltis. Unfortunately, Jenny had some mm -hmm. conflicts personally, and she won't be able to join us this year. Um, but we're really excited about this. It's um, going back to the DC area so that the, our constituents in that area, um, both federal and legislative can um, can join us uh, for some of our event. And then of course us join them. Um, the Tuesday morning is um, scheduled for uh, Hill visits uh, to meet with our constituents. And I'm currently working through those appointment processes right now. Um, and we'll be meeting with staffers because they're not in session that week, um, given the, uh, the the calendar. And um, Monday is Fed Day, so we'll have a lot of federal representation. Um, so we're really looking forward to this event. Um, and then the next event um, is going to be in September, and this is going to be in San Antonio. Uh, so uh, if you're interested, please uh, start um, uh gearing up to, uh, we'll start, ask for those interests and then do a selection of who we can actually uh, send to this conference from the council and finalize our budget. So I'll be asking that probably via email, but just wanted to get it on your calendars. And then um, uh, Genevieve and I are working through membership right now. Um, I've been having to deal with some of the um, growing, growing changes not pains of the district. Uh, they've changed their membership model recently. And we're just trying to get everything realigned. Uh, if you're not currently a member, we will be uh, working to get you to be a member. Um, I don't know if there's much you have to do there. Um, the geospatial maturity assessment um, is done every two years by uh, by NISJIC. And it is a it is a big lift. It, it was just released. It started last year. Oh gosh probably early January. And so basically it works through all the states and gives them a grade on some of the national spatial data infrastructure along with other important geospatial initiatives. Um, so uh, some of the staff here at the library uh, know that we fill out the survey um, and as we get graded, we also are responsible for um, uh, in our specific uh, areas of expertise, setting um, the grading uh, scales and the questions that are asked um, to come up with each grade. So Michael works on the 911. I work on geo-enabled elections. I've worked on geodetic control in the past. Um, and so uh, we are heavily involved in this process. Um, I don't have more other than just to tell you that it's out and I will point you to it um, because it just came out. So I, for the April meeting, I'll go through and show you the scores from past years. You certainly can go and take a look at it. We've had the highest um, reporting this year by states. So we had 47 states report, which is really great um, to get a better understanding of how we're doing as a nation. We did go up from last year. We were a B last year. Now we're a B plus. Um, and uh, unfortunately, some of the grades change over the years. So I think it's important for me to explain that to you. Um, in the past, we were graded on leaf off imagery. And of course, we failed. <laughs> Um, and so because we don't have imagery programs here, I'd like to refer to it as snow on, snow off. Um, but these are the state-led themes. Um, and so we are, um, uh, I think it's pretty obvious why we would get an A in Cadastro. We're doing really well in addresses. Elevation, we're at a C right now, but we're working towards getting that um, statewide LIDAR, transportation. We have a lot of work to do. And next gen, we're at a B. And then for the federally led themes, geodetic control, we get a B plus uh, government units, which also we renamed a long time ago, administrative boundaries, we get an A. And then leaf on imagery, which I don't think is a good grade, we get a B. 
we don't have imagery program here. We just are 100% reliant upon the name. Um, and so that's something that we work through um, to represent Montana. And the Western states are very different from Eastern states. And so um, there's a little bit of a struggle on how to appropriately grade us given our vast differences from coast to coast. So I will definitely be giving you uh, the links to this and, uh, and putting that out there probably to the native community as well, just to let everyone have, know how we are doing. And coordination got a conversion. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thanks, Valentine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgot to touch that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm back. <laughs> we all do a lot of work, so mm -hmm. it's a fun job to do. Um, I think the next up on the mm -hmm. agenda is mm -hmm. the grants. Okay. Let me just ask if there's any yeah. any questions or discussion about anything that Aaron reported on. I'm going to I'm going to start with this for the grand study and then right. I'll switch okay. over. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the we received 11 applications this year for the grant um, program and uh, I have organized these in the tiers. So we've identified like the tier one and tier two. Tier one aligns uh, with MSDI. Tier two is more of a um, uh, a priority for um, that uh, individual agency, but we have uh, identified those as disaster response, capacity building, uh, asset inventory, RTN, I think those are the three. And um, you can see that the MLA dollar request um, is far exceeds what we typically budget um, for uh, for the, um, oh, the, I just found an issue, MLA dollar request. See, that's <laughs> mm -hmm. old habits mm -hmm. by heart, MGIA dollar request. Um, uh, that's an, un, an updated template that needs mm -hmm. to be changed from last year. Um, so we um, will obviously will not be able to fund all of these, and uh, we are working through getting the applications published online and then redistributed to the group that we established at the last um, council meeting. So you'll be hearing from me about um, scoring these. Um, we will look to have everything published the Tuesday. It will be, we'll need to get it published the 16th. So we have everything out um, at least one week prior to the meeting and then to give you at least four, uh, three or four weeks to review um, those applications. Um, we've done a good job of doing it online. Um, so we'll do a virtual scoring meeting and then discuss those at that short April meeting. Um, but looking forward to working with you all on that. And I also would like to point out, um, we have uh, done a lot of training to um, uh, to inform the community on what is the best possible scenario for writing and developing um, uh, an MLA, MGIA grant and, um, and the importance of having matching funds. It is not a requirement yet. I say yet because one day it could be. Um, but it, it does um, it does get counted in the scoring, so you will have an advantage if there is matching funds. And I think that that um, uh, announcement and is clearly understood because we have uh, we're leveraging over over one hundred fifty thousand dollars of uh, local and it's all local this year local funds. So really appreciative to um, seeing those changes being made and understood. Um, throughout uh, our grant program and with our applicants. And then in, if I, I'm going to have you, I'm going to stop sharing and then, sure. yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. And this is um, the grant status report. I'm going to start with fiscal year 2024. Um, this is very common. Typically, uh, grantees will not start um, uh, uh, asking for reimbursement towards the end of, uh, of the grant. And so uh, you see that we've only uh, distributed about $18,000 to date, um, or $18,000 has been requested to date, and we're working through the process of, uh, of redistributing those funds. Um, <clears throat> we uh, 
we'll have another grant report due in April. And now is the time where we start asking them to consider, are they going to be able to complete this within the allotted time that, that was originally established in their contracts? Um, and we're just going to be asking uh, for um, requests for extensions. And so those are due in May. And um, we try to get those out of the way beforehand. Um, we do know of, uh, because grants are so um, uh, reliant on the, the human that is involved <laughs> with managing them, things happen. And we are uh, already aware of um, some uh, uh, unfortunate happenings with some of our grant apps. Uh, grantees, and uh, we, I do know that um, we'll probably have several being um, uh, extended through fiscal year 2025, but we'll work through those folks and get those extended and help um, facilitate the best we can to get them wrapped up and uh, closed out within the two-year time frame. And then if you'll go to the next page, thank you. Uh, so this is fiscal year 2023. You can see the green are the um, completed. Ooh, the gray is not showing here. Um, in fact, there might not be a gray right now. Um, so uh, the reason why we changed the grant program to allow for a two-year grant cycle, which is something that this council is going to have to discuss and what that looks like, is most grantees ask for a second year. And um, and so uh, even Missoula County had extended their grant, uh, even though I think they only needed one month uh, in extension, but they were able to wrap it up late summer of last year. And so we just see this naturally happening uh, where uh, applicants just need a little more time. And so uh, you can see that we are working through uh, the, the grants um, again, it's very common to not uh, ask for reimbursements until the end of the of the uh, of the project itself, and we're working to close out um, uh, these grants and uh, actively uh, we're taking more active project manager approach than I think we ever have because I've worked with redistributing project managers to some of the analysts uh, that we have on staff and some other leads um, just to kind of distribute the workload because uh, it's impossible for one person to actively manage all of these grants. Um, so it's it's going well. And then I think if you could go to the next page. Okay. So let's take a, a trip through history. <laughs> Uh, for fiscal year 2022, uh, this was coming out of the uh, pandemic and the shutdown. This was, so these were awarded in 2021. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. I always need like a chart in front of me. And that year, due to just the lack of going out and speaking to people, we did not get a, um, a full request for the $250,000. So one through eight was awarded during the normal cycle. Then uh, we had funding remaining and we decided to open it back up um, to, it was, about, it was about 80 grand. We decided to open it back up to an off-cycle grant pr process. And it was the first time I think we've ever did an off-cycle grant, uh, at least under my um, uh, uh, leadership in my role. And we dedicated it solely towards PLSS and uh, were able to fund uh, four additional grants for the city of Great Falls, Macomb County, DNRC, and Stillwater. Again, um, our grant program is tied closely to the people who manage it and, um, and a lot of things happen. And so um, because of uh, the lockdown and um, the infrastructure bill, it was very hard to find surveyors specifically in this area with the DNRC and what they were trying to collect in Coal Creek. So we've kind of had to pivot to see what we could do. Um, and we're not exactly collecting Coal Creek, but it will uh, uh, it will be in the Flathead area. We're finalizing the collection now. Um, that area is just totally inaccessible, unfortunately, because it is covered in snow and the way the grant cycle falls, we just had a very hard time um, getting uh, getting this area collected. This is going to benefit timber harvests, but we've I, I, we've identified some other areas that will be benefit both the MSDI and the DNRC and the local government in that area um, by getting this uh, this new area collected. If you're interested, 
uh, please reach out to me and I can I can send you that new area of interest. But it's in Flathead County. I do believe it's north northeast of Flathead Lake. Um, and then Stillwater County, they have experienced back-to-back uh, -back disasters there, um, but luckily they have been able to um, uh, get back on schedule and hope to extend uh, this grant fully. So um, I was a little concerned, uh, timing and just other circumstances that happened, but I think uh, I feel a lot better in the past couple months, we've made a lot of headway on these two grants. So they're looking good. And if anyone has any questions, I can answer those. I just wanted to take a moment and acknowledge Sean Anderson, who joined the meeting. He introduced himself as our grants and contracts coordinator. He's been putting in a lot of administrative support on these grants and will be involved in, in helping to do some of these grant updates for the council in the future. But um, he's a, he's been a great addition to our support team in, in helping with some of the administrative workload and administering the grants. So, Sean, we're glad you could be with us today. Well, thank you, Jenny. Um, I think Aaron puts a lot more work in than I do, um, but I do appreciate it. I know I like to help with this type of thing. It's it's new to me, so I like to learn it. And I like working with all the people that I've gotten to work with in the last year on these previous grants. I'm through with the grant update. I can't remember what it was next on the agenda. Um, discussion about NISJ membership. Yeah. Um, the so I guess I heard you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was no other discussion mm -hmm. other than okay. uh, Genevieve and I are working on it, and um, nothing they have to do. Yeah, nothing you have to do. We're just going to finalize our end of things, and um, and then make sure that you're added. Uh, I I would just encourage you all and Lee, if you want to talk about your involvement. Um, that would be wonderful, but encourage you all to become members of NISJIC and really, because um, I think it will benefit you not only in your role as a council, but then just your role as a GIS professional. Um, there's a lot of opportunity. It's a really amazing group. Um, there is a group called the Council of Councils, and um, and I would en encourage uh, uh, our council representation on that. Um, but um, we, you can, you can get involved, um, by attending a conference. You can get involved by attending this council of councils. There are also other, um, uh, working groups and you really have access to, um, through this paid membership, um, uh, to a lot of expertise. And so I would say tap into it while you are a council member, because it is a, it is a lot of really valuable information. In addition to that, if you're not familiar with a certain type of topic that we talk about, because you can't be familiar with everything, it's just impossible. If you want to expand and learn more about broadband, if you want to learn more about NextGen, the uh, NISDIC um, organization has put together with state reps a series of 101 sessions. And as a member, you have access to those sessions. So if you want to brush up on your broadband, you want to brush up on your uh, next gen understanding elections um, imagery. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that have done been done. Um, I would say that start there. Um, they're they're very valuable. Um, there's also um, could you just go to nisjic.org really quickly, please. In addition to um, the library and past um, materials, meeting materials, if you. It, I don't think you're going to see it here. Uh, actually, just click on my NISJIC up in the top right. Um, you have access to uh, the my.nisjic community, and it is uh, a series of different topics um, that you'll have access to um, with discussion forums, and they're, and they're very active. Um, sometimes I'm in awe of how active some people are in here. <laughs> uh, but... Um, if you want to uh, research or learn more, like uh, some recent posts that I've done is uh, I'm the tribal liaison to the National Tribal GIS Information Center. And, um, you know, I've been giving updates on some of my work there. Um, there's a lot of uh, um, updates about uh, 
national policy and the Geospatial Data Act and um, and then technology grant opportunities, things like that. So I'd highly recommend that you um, get on here and, and just take a look and and then maybe even become active in the um, in the Council of Councils forum so we can help maybe walk you through that, maybe that July meeting, I can sure. show you that. So Montana has always been very active in the district community and I'd like to um, continue to embrace that um, as the council and, and recommend that. And Lee, I think you're the only one on the council now that has been to a, a district event. Yeah, I think so, yeah. I highly recommend it. It's it's a it's an intense couple of days, but you get to meet an incredible networking community. Um, just the networking opportunities are great, and it and it for me it gets me a little bit out of my comfort zone and thinking about some of these topics at a broader scale and a bigger picture. And sometimes it's hard to relate that back to the things that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but I also feel that I don't have to, right? I, I the, the opportunity to, to kind of expand my perspective and, and learn more about what's going on in this bigger picture, um, I think is, is super valuable for me. Um, and then think always helps me think about how best to bring to work with the council with our council and represent you know our community members to the council and then what that rolls up to at a national scale and so it really helps me frame um my council participation as well so definitely recommend i tend to forget that the website as a resource and it's it's a good reminder i've gotten on a couple of times recently like oh that's a really good reminder that that's here <laughs> There's a lot there, um, so definitely take a fi find a few minutes to to go through, and I'm sure you'll find something that's applicable to even to your day to day stuff. That's good. And then I finally I would say I know that it could be a bit intimidating coming to this group, but I will say what what Montana has that a lot of them don't is we've had a council in place since 2005. So we kind of are very mature in, cert in certain aspects of our spatial data infrastructure and a lot of other states still don't, you know, have statewide cadastral. So I would say that, um, keep that in mind that um, you are coming from a, a solid foundation of, uh, of geospatial community. And uh, again, highly recommend that you all become uh, active in this community, and probably find some cool friends throughout the US as well. Yeah, it does feel wow. intimidating because it is at mm -hmm. such a high level and everything, but it really once you once you dip your toe in the water, it's really not. The the community is um like like Aaron was saying, is very uh responsive to Montana and they're like, Oh, you're from Montana. Okay, great. You know, and they're meet you're immediately in the conversation. Um I think a lot of that is thanks to the the good work that Aaron does, but our history is is well known and respected there too. So it's it's easy to get involved if you put a little effort into it. And again, all travel would be reimbursed by the council if we do uh, end up sending you to one of these events. And I am working hard to bring the conference for the first time mm -hmm. ever to Bozeman in 2026. And I think the work is going to be a lot harder than I intended, but willing to do it. <laughs> That's our goal. I made it very well known. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I in fact have to get off this call and go have some conversations about how this conference needs to be in Montana. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And that I think is all we I think. That's all the, I, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions for Aaron? Is there any public comment on any matter not contained in this agenda that's within the jurisdiction of uh, the state library and the council, I should say? Are there any other business or announcements? Oh, 
All right, hearing none, we can adjourn at 11.51. Thank you all. For I was like, what time is that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. for joining us. Thanks, we'll, see you at, we'll see you at Megan. See you guys. Thanks. Thank you.